Okay, this is an M112 V6 on a uh, Mercedes W163. And today we're going to check the EGR valve, which is right back. Can you see it right there? Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a pain to get to. You have to remove the intake, uh, the air intake. So undo these two clips. Rotate the boom box up out of the way. And then you'll reach down. There's sorry, there's one 10 millimeter bolt um, right there. Oops, right here. Is that an eight mil? An eight millimeter. Or sorry, no, that's a Torx. Um, Torx, what number is it? Uh, da, 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 da. I'll find out the Torx number when I take it off and let you know. And then you'll reach back underneath. See the air box on top? There's a plastic clip right there that looks like it unclips. That's not. That's a locator. You reach your hand underneath. So my hand's going underneath. And you'll feel a plastic tab that you're going to pull. And then pull the intake pipe off. And the only other thing to take off is there's an air hose that goes from here. Um, one of the, uh, the breather hoses for the uh, cylinder head goes back down and you can unhook it down in there or you can pull it off of this side either way down there is probably much easier so I'm going to unhook all that pull it out and uh, back in a few minutes and I'll let you know what size Torx bolt that is I think it's an E oh god I don't know what my Torx bolt sizes are always horrible anyway back in a second okay so it's an E10 reverse Torx and there's the bolt there out and I'm going to pull the rest of that intake off and back in a second Okay, next we're going to take an E12 Torx. Oh, sorry. Um, first, you have to remove the, uh, the last fuel injector here. You have to pull off the wiring harness for it. You simply pinch these two metal tabs in and pull it out. Same as on this one. Two metal tabs. Pinch and pull. Put that one back on. And move the wire out of the way. It's an E12 Torx. It's a little hard to get past the fuel rail here, but if you put the uh, the socket on the nut or on the bolt, and then where's my extension here? Get the socket on the bolt, and then because there's no room underneath the pipe, and then put the uh, the extension in there. I managed to get it uh, free. About I don't want to have to remove the whole fuel rail. You could do that, but I'm not going to, and I got it free. So this bolt's coming out. Uh, it's an E12, and E12. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so there's the E12 bolt out. As you can see, it does have thread lock on it. And I forgot to mention, I did pull the breather hose off of that the left cylinder head or sorry right cylinder head so now you can see that bolt is out and there should be one more bolt holding that in which I have to find I haven't removed one of these on an M112 yet so I'm trying to find there's another bolt holding the sucker in and then there's if you follow this pipe here with a little flexible elbow there's two eight millimeter regular nuts where it bolts those two little eight millimeter nuts or I don't know if those are Torx nuts or not yes they are I think yeah so probably an E10 those two little bolts and there's one unhook the uh, the vacuum hose there pull that off and I've got to find this other bolt here there's one more and I can't find the damn thing I don't think it's this one holding the engine mount but there is one more somewhere. I'll find it. <laughs> anyway, back in a minute. Hey, apparently the second bolt was just behind the uh, the pipe. I didn't even see it. That's right there. It's also an E12. And for some reason my socket won't go back on it. Come on, go back on. Stuck. 
it's come up against the, oh, great, how am I going to do this? Um, I have to widen that back down a little bit and take that bolt out and then there's an electrical connector. Um, it's the same as these. There's a yellow electrical connector. See it back there? It's got two little, I can't see past my wrench. It's got two little spring clips. Pinch them in, pull it out. That's the electrical connector on the uh, EGR valve. So you'll unclip that and pull it off and then we'll take off those two T10 bolts on the back of this pipe. The two, there's one there, and one right there. And once those are off, be back in a minute. Okay, these two eight millimeter bolts are a little hard to access. Um, sorry, the T10 bolts, but you can use an eight millimeter wrench and get in there and get on them. Because again, this, this flexible pipe, the silver pipe right there, is not accessible behind it. If you have an E10 wrench, there you go. If you don't, an eight millimeter regular wrench, like this is a 10 point, it'll fit fine. And these are not torqued on, so you're not gonna strip the threads on these. These are very, very lightly put in. They're, they're uh, steel bolts going into aluminum, so the torque spec is gonna be like 10 foot pounds. So they're not gonna be on very tight. And as you can see, the blue on there, they're thread locked, so we're gonna take those two off. And uh, da -da -da -da. hopefully that is it. I think there might be one little mount left underneath the electrical connector. I feel something holding it in, but I'm not sure. Back in a sec. Okay, so here's the EGR valve out. Um, this is the little end that came out, those two little eight millimeter nuts that came out. This is the end that goes into the intake manifold. And that's the side that goes into the exhaust. And it's a little carboned up. Not a lot. Let's look in this end. Eh, let's get out in the sunlight, maybe you can see some more. Yeah, it's pretty grungy. But I had to loosen this 24 millimeter nut on top and then there's one more hose uh, da, 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 which way does this go like this there's one more hose right there that one that goes down to the intake right there you see that little hose nipple that hooks onto there see how grungy that is yikes so anyway, we're going to clean this all out with brake fluid. I'm going to use uh, brake, not brake fluid, brake cleaner. So I'm going to clean this out. Oh, let's also look at the exhaust port where it comes in from the engine. Oh, not too bad. Could be much worse. So I'm going to clean all these out. And underneath the EGR, there's a little metal gasket, this one right here. Make sure you don't lose that because you want to put use that to put it back in. And uh, I'm going to clean this all up and be back in a minute. Oh, uh, one more thing. Should be able to suck <laughs> on this hose or put vacuum on that hose and watch the little... Uh, I just sucked on it. <laughs> little oily and watch that little valve move in and out see the little arm it's on that little valve should move in and out when you put suction on it um, or you can unhook it actually since that's okay sorry my battery my camera just went in low power mode um, I'm going to unhook this hose and suck on this. I'm just going to put some, you can, if you have a vacuum thingy, I've got one. I'm just not going to bother pulling it all out. Unhook this hose and suck on it to make sure this goes in and out. That little plenum. If you can move it with a screwdriver. It should, if it's stuck, that's a problem. I'm just going to push down on it. No, it's not moving at all. Oh, yes, it is. So anyway, we're going to clean this all up, and I'm going to spray some lubricant in there on that little shaft. And uh, clean it all up and be back in a minute. Okay, so while this is cleaning, um, I've got some uh, seafoam deep creep that I'm using to get rid of the carbon that's in there. I'm also cleaning up the... Uh, have a little bit 
sitting in there cleaning any carbon that may be around the valve shaft down there. The valve does move. I performed the suck test. <laughs> Just detach this hose from the yellow side and suck on it and you should see the little valve, the little plenum move up and down. And uh, I just lubricated the outside of it with a little bit of uh, lubricant. Uh, which one did I use? Doesn't really matter. Liquid wrench rust inhibitor. Same stuff. It's all good. Um, yeah, okay. So while we're waiting for that, what's going to possibly make you think your EGR is bad? I didn't think mine was bad. There's nothing, no symptoms to my car that would make it appear bad. I just wanted to take it off because <laughs> it's one of the things I just do. Um, so anyway, um, uh, faulty idle uh, could be an EGR problem, could also be a MAF sensor, could be a, all kinds of other things, but uh, car dying at idle, uh, especially when it's warm, uh, cold idle, uh, not running properly, excessive fuel consumption, um, check engine light could also come on, um, it's all emissions related, it just basically takes exhaust gases and brings them back to be reburned. Um, and if that doesn't open up, then it's going to cause excessive temperature. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, there's just a, there's, there's a whole bunch of things that can cause it to be a symptom of an EGR, but most of them are going to be rough idle, rough running, and poor fuel consumption. That's the three biggies. Um, so anyway, we're going to clean this off and put it back together. There is a gasket on the inside here. Oh, so rubber gasket on the inside of that flange where this this is the end that goes into the engine ah, <laughs> wow that's a little dirty I have to put some more in there because I just dumped it out um, if you have a pipe cleaner try running it through there I'm looking around for a pipe cleaner I can't find one I'm gonna stuff a piece of rope in there I just found this piece of rope that I'm gonna jam down in there and try and make it all the way through and then just saw it back and forth to clean it don't overly bend the little bellows because it could crack it's stainless steel but uh, you don't want it to crack on you um, I am going to use some RTV uh, high temperature copper silicone sealant on here when it goes back in just a light smear when it goes back in and uh, that's about it uh, you know, once you're done, rehook it up. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, dielectric grease in the connector to make sure that's good. And uh, check all these hoses for splits. See if any of them are split or open. I'm not sure if there's supposed to be a little protective cap on the end of that little breather there. Usually there's a little protective uh, little foam end on there. Actually, stay there. Don't fall. And go grab one, uh, another one and show you. Well, I thought I had one, but apparently I don't. I just have a bunch of check valves. Unless there's one. No. That's just a little one-way vacuum valve. That's what I was thinking when I saw it. Um, hmm. I guess I don't have one. Okay. Well, I'm going to assume it's supposed to be on. It's, there's no cap on there. So I'm going to clean this up, put it back together, and uh, that's about it. That's all. If you can't think of anything else to say. <laughs> I was going to say something about if it's clogged and not moving, you're going to have to replace it. But you've probably already figured that out on your own. If it's not moving at all, if you can't get it to move, um, if doing a little suction test here does not make the diaphragm move in and out, and you can't clean up the little shaft and get it moving, then uh, your EGR is toast, and you'll have to replace it. Um, that's all I can think of. Anyway, I'm going to be putting it back together in a minute, and thank you for watching. One last thing as I'm putting this back together, um, don't forget to put blue thread locker, blue, not red, on the uh, bolts before you put them back in. Uh, make sure to hook up all your hoses, check everything is, is hooked up under there and that everything is attached to the throttle body properly. Don't forget that little hose that goes into the intake there and your electrical connections for the back fuel injector there and the yellow one for the EGR valve. Those two, don't forget those. And that's about it. Um, hopefully this helps someone. Thanks for watching. Yeah, yeah, it's me again. <laughs> I always got one last thing to say because I always forget to say things. When you're putting the um, 
the intake back on, um, the top hose, this hose that routes from the top of the uh, valve cover on this side, there's a little slot port back there. See right there, it goes up in. And position this clip on the top first, push it in and then rotate down like this. And you'll hear the clip on the bottom engage um, uh, the throttle body. You'll hear it snap in. And then hook everything else up. And uh, again, thanks for watching.